Hi everyone. Let's get back together today for a little while and let's look at two concepts I think will be very, very easy and clear for you. We're going to talk about the concept of um, halfway. Okay? We've already talked about midpoint and we know that a midpoint is the point that is halfway between each end of a line segment. So let's say that in this example right here we're given so we're not guessing or assuming, we're given that point P is the midpoint of segment. Notice this symbol on top, segment ST. So if P is the midpoint of ST, then we would want to make sure that we marked our, our information that we know. So we know that this segment is congruent to this segment, meaning that they have the same measure. So if that's the midpoint, then what we know is that the distance from S to P is equal to the distance from P to T. And notice that I did not put any symbols over the top because when we're talking about distance, we talk about equals. We talk about segments, we talk about congruent. So midpoint tells us we've got equal distances, so I'm very careful to write it that way. And I look up here if I want to solve for x because we can put some algebra in here very, very easily. So if, if the distance from s to p is given to be 3x, then I can substitute for 3p. I can substitute in 3x. And the distance from p to t is given to be 12. So instead of pt, I can substitute in 12. And then I can use my, al my, arithmet my, excuse me, my algebra, divide both sides by 3, and x is equal to 4. So you can solve some algebra in with your geometry in situations like that. I wanted to go back and revisit that before we talked about angle bisectors. So let's take a look now at what that means. The word bisect, I don't believe we've talked about yet, so let's do now. Every time that you see the word bisect as a verb or bisector, which is a noun, it always is something that's being... Um, divided in half into two equal parts. So if it's talking about an angle that is, has a bisector or is bisected, then that angle has been divided into two equal angles. They have equal measure. So let's see how this would look in a problem. Again, we would be given, we would never say, <coughs> excuse me, we would never say, well, it looks like it's halfway. No, no, no. But we're given that it is, so we were like, yay, that's wonderful, and we go with it. So it's given that BD ray, notice the notation, ray BD bisects angle ABC. That means that that ray divides this big angle ABC into two equal angles, angles that have two equal measures. So I will mark that. I will mark it somehow so that anyone who looks at that picture understands that this little angle and this little angle have the same measure. Okay? And that's all that bisects means. So whenever you have a bisector, it, may, it might say that BD is a bisector of angle ABC, or it may say that BD bisects angle ABC, either way, then what you know is that that ray divides the big angle into two equal angles and you can mark that and you should mark that immediately. You want to always mark everything that you know. So that's a new concept for us and we like it when we get things like that given to us because it's more information that we know about a problem and less that we have to figure out and it's tools that we can use to figure out what we're trying to get to. It's like a big puzzle eventually. You'll really love it, I promise. Okay, let's look back at this uh, midpoint again and see if we can use the word bisector here as well. The midpoint is a point, and that point divides that into two equal parts. Let's take and put a line. Let's just draw a lot of lines we could draw through one point, you know. But let's just draw this one. Let's say that's line L. Well, if line L passes through that midpoint, which it does, then we can say that line L bisects 
segment ST because it divides it into two parts <clears throat> that have the same measure. So we can bisect an angle, we can bisect a segment. So be on the lookout for the word bisects or bisector. Okay? Now let's kind of put that away for a minute and let's look at angles that are in this, um, in fact I want to give us just a little more space <clears throat> right now and I want us to take a look at angles that have a new name and they are called vertical angles. vertical angles. And we haven't really talked about these at all yet, so let's take a look at them. Vertical angles are formed when you have two lines that intersect. So let's do that. Let's say we have this line right here, and let's say we have this line right here, and we'll call this one line L, and we'll call this one line M. Notice I'm using lowercase. Okay, let's number those just so we can refer to them easily. Let's call it angle 1, angle 2, angle 3, and angle 4. Okay, we just want to define vertical angles right now. So the vertical angles are the ones that are straight across from each other. They're not adjacent. You know, these two would be adjacent, those are adjacent, these are adjacent, and these. But angle 1 and angle 3, let's say angle 1 and angle 3 are vertical angles. I'll just say vertical. And I just think they, they just remind me of a bow tie. You know, they're on each, the opposite sides. They're kind of like opposite. And also, 2 and 4 are also considered to be vertical angles. And that's just the name. I mean, truly, that is just their name for the moment. They're vertical angles. It doesn't mean they're up and down necessarily. They're just across from each other. And the only place that they touch, the only point they have in common, is the vertex. So there's angle 1, and there's angle 3. And the only point they have in common is the vertex. And the same for 2 and 4. So we'll get real, real comfortable with that as we go along. But let's see what we already know about a picture like this. And we know that those are called vertical angles, so let's kind of just move on from there. And let's say, what do we know about angle 1 and angle 2? What do we already know? Now, we know that's a line, so we know angle 1 and 2. Somebody is saying angle 1 and 2 are a linear pair, right? Okay, because they are two, line, two angles that are adjacent and they form a line. And then somebody else is saying, well, if they are a linear pair, then we know that they would be supplementary. So we know that angle 1 and angle 2 are supplementary because linear pairs are supplementary. We've already learned that. Well, what else do we know about angle 1 and angle 2 then? We know then that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 is equal to what? Right? 180 because that's what supplementary means. So it's kind of like a little flow chart in a way that you know that they're linear pairs just by definition and because the way the drawing is. And then if they're linear pairs then you know they're supplementary because of the linear pair postulate says they are. And then if they're supplementary, then we know that their measures add up to 180 because that is what the definition of supplementary tells us. So now we have a picture of two lines that intersect in a point, and we know a lot about that, and we're not because of, of our prior knowledge at this point. Okay, now let's take that a little bit step further. And let's say that we know that angle 1 is 2x plus 1. I'm just going to put in a little bit of algebra here. And let's say that we know that angle 2 is 3x plus 9. 
And what if your task now was to solve for x? So you look at it, look at the picture, and you're like, okay, I'm going to erase this because I want to think through that again. I want us to think through that again. So let's get this out of the way and see if we can completely think through it again. I know we can. So we're like looking at this and we're going like, how can we solve for x? And we say, well, we could solve for x because we could write an equation that says that this angle and this angle would add up to right 180 because they are a linear pair. They make a line and they're supplementary so they add up to 180. So here we go. We say, well, we can do that. Let's say that we've got 2x plus 1 plus 3x plus 9 and that equals 180 and then we just use our algebra that we already know. We add like terms we get 5x 1 and 9 is 10. We subtract 10 from both sides and we get 5x is equal to 170. We divide by 5 and 5 goes into that 3 times. <clears throat> 5 goes into 24 times so x is equal to 34. Now if we want to check it, <clears throat> if it just says find x, then we're done. But it might say sometimes find the measure of, of angle 1. <clears throat> Excuse me. If it says that, then we're not done when we see that x is 34. We found x but not the measure of angle 1. So let's look back at the measure of angle 1. There it is right there. It's 2x plus 1. So the measure of angle 1 is 2x plus 1. That's what we were given. And now we had, had to go through this and find x to be 34. So we substitute. Instead of x, we put in 34. And then we just use our arithmetic at this point. 2 times 34 is 68 plus 1. The measure of angle 1 is 69 degrees. The measure of angle 1 is 69 degrees. So if this angle is 69 degrees, I want you to think of two ways that we could get that angle. Two ways that we could get the measure of angle 2 measure of angle 2. Well one thing we could put in 3x plus 9 and we could substitute in 34 for x. So let's do that. The measure of angle 2 is 3x plus 9. Alright now x is 34 so let's put in 34 for x and see what we get. We've got 3 times 34 plus 9. So the measure of angle 2, 3 times 34 would be 102 plus 9. And then the measure of angle 2 would be 111 degrees. Okay, now how, what is one way that we could check that? Or, to, or what is another way that we could have found that? Either way you want to look at it, it's the same idea. These two angles, angle 1 and angle 2, we said a while ago, are a linear pair. These two are a linear pair because they form a line. And they are supplementary, which means they should add up to 180. So if I take 69 and I subtract it from 180, 9 from 10 is 1 and 6 from 7 is 1, I get 111, which is what I got that way. So it is true that 111 and 169 add up to give you 180 degrees. So you see it is kind of like a puzzle. You can use your algebra and you have a picture to go with it, which really brings your algebra to life and maybe gives a little more meaning to your geometry as well. So you don't separate algebra and geometry. They're right in there together. And as we go, we'll be incorporating more and more algebra along the way. So, 
I want you to have a really good understanding of vertical angles. And all we've done with them so far is just know what they are. They're the ones across. So 2 and 4 are vertical. 1 and 3 are vertical. That's just their names. And then we looked at the situation and see, we, to see what we already knew was true. And then we looked at and found all about our linear pairs and our supplementary and we used our algebra. Great problem for you to turn off this video now and go back and work through yourself. Draw it on your paper and work through it all by yourself and then look back up here and see if you're good to go. If you are, wonderful. If you're not, work at it a little bit longer. And we'll talk about vertical angles a lot more. See you later.